Are uh, you guys still blast from the past week? You know, I'm uploading a lot of old tutorials that I taught back in the day and kind of rehashing them a little bit. This one's called Jack in the Hole, but I'm going to be using the two Red Kings for this. When you perform it, just say, hey, what are your favorite face cards? Queens, what color, red or black? Pick whatever, uh, whatever color your spectator wants. So once you have the two cards out that you want to use, you have the spectator, pick the cards, leave these face up on the table. And um, so when they pick a card, fan through, allow them to return it somewhere in the deck, let them get one last look at it. And what you tell them is you're going to try to get these cards to find their card. And you ask them, which one do you like more, the King of Hearts or the King of Diamonds? I personally like the Hearts more. Now, because I've been doing magic and manipulating cards so long, I know that their card, from when they put it in, I saw the fan. I counted quickly, and I could just tell that it was 23 cards down from the top of the deck, which would mean that it's 29 cards down from the bottom of the deck, minus the two cards, minus the King of Diamonds and the King of Hearts. So that's actually 27 cards from the bottom. So... I'm going to try to riffle exactly 27 cards down. Catch one card. There's six of clubs. Let's learn how to do it. Hey you guys, before I go on to teach the effect, I wanted to tell you about this cool deck of cards because I'm sure a lot of you will be interested. It's Fulton's October playing cards. The box is uh, pretty cool. The inside of it is all decked out. And uh, yeah, face cards are very interesting. And the backs are cool too. This was given to me from uh, my buddies over at playingcards.net. And I'll leave a link in the description. If you use the promo code DISTURB120, then they'll give you a discount. You can get uh, any deck of cards you want there for a discount. So other than that, let's, let's get into the tutorial. This is another one of those you can do with any deck of cards. Uh, any two sets of matching face cards. I usually use the blackjacks. But I like to ask the spectators, oh, what are your uh, two favorite cards? Jacks, Jacks, Queens, or Kings? Kings. Okay, hearts are dying, or, you know, reds or blacks. Reds. So you find the two red kings. You have them pick a card. Let's say they pick the four spades. Now, when I do this, I like to do the whole, uh, I can calculate where your card is exactly. So the best way to pull that off is to utilize the pass. Because it allows you to put the card in the deck and immediately square it up and get it to the top where you need it to be uh, without them really catching it. But, I mean, if you are uncomfortable doing that, you can easily do any, you know, different weight of the pass. You know, you can do a square up, get on the table, pass, anything to control the uh, their selected card to the top. They put in the middle, you catch a break, you know, do your, do your cuts, get it to the top. I, uh, I, highly recommend doing the pass because instantaneously you can be like okay put your card somewhere in the middle all right now just from calculating these cards i can already tell that your card is 23 cards down from the top and in that little story i got it to the top but you know they don't know any better so 23 cards down from the top i'm going to try to have the two kings find it so this is where the only move really comes into play. You're going to do a wrist kill and push off their card, the top card, uh, just just enough to get a break underneath it. Pull it back, get a break underneath it. So I'm going to quick like that. Boom. Already have it. Take the two, uh, two kings and under disguise, square them up together, and now you have a break on, under these three cards. And you say, which do you like more? Hearts or diamonds? They'll say whatever it is. It just gives you an excuse to split through the cards because what you've done is sandwiched their selected card between the two kings. And the way you went about doing that is just simply, which one do you like more? Diamonds. And then you just peel the top card off, allowing you to take these two cards underneath as one. Line it up. Or diamonds. And that way, you can get yourself into a comfortable holding position of these two cards, and they won't know that their card is underneath it. So from here is where the storytelling comes into place. Oh, yeah, I think it's, you know, do the math. Find out logistically how you're going to present it, because you don't want to be doing math on the fly. 
Yeah, I think your card is 23 cards down from the top. So that would be 29 cards up from the bottom minus these two cards. That's 27 cards down from the bottom. Because um, the way you're going to riffle is going to be from the bottom up. Grip the cards and reposition them to be your fingers, your four fingers, middle fingers on here. Your ring finger is back here holding on to the king to allow you to have this firm grip and hold the two cards without flashing that four. From here, I'm going to riffle 27 cards up, stab the deck, and as you peel out, you're just splitting those cards apart and creating the, uh, the very real illusion that riffle through. Stab one card, there are four spades. All right, you guys, thank you for watching. That was Jack in the Hole. I hope you uh, learned it, get, get it down, get the pass down. It's very uh, crucial and uh, makes the storytelling so much more believable. This is one of those, like, if you tell them the right light, you can really trip people out and think, I don't think that was a magic trick. I think you just have a skill of counting and being able to cut the cards exactly where you need to and snatching the card you're looking for. Um, so if it's done in the right story, it's one of those, like, is that a magic trick or is that real? And those are the cool, the cool moments when it comes to card manipulation. But if you're looking for more powerful magic, integral social dynamics, subscribe to How to Disturb Reality. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Jarek120. Be inspired to learn, inspired to disturb, and always rise above.